Hare Krishna. Welcome to Bhakti Sangha conference call. Uh, today we are very fortunate to have His Holiness Chandra Mauri Swami Maharaj uh, to enlighten us on topic Srimad Bhagavatam 4.28.61. So we will uh, read the verse today and Gautami Ganga Das Prabhuji will be reading verse. So thank you so much Prabhuji. Please take over. Hare Krishna, verse 61. Maya hi esha maya shrishta yat pam sam striyam satim manya se no bhayam yat vai ham so pasya vayor gatim. What for uh, translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Prabhupada, Shravapad ki jai. Sometimes you think yourself a man, sometimes a chaste woman, and sometimes a neutral eunuch. This is all because of the body which is created by the illusory energy. This energy, illusory energy is by potency and actually both of us, you and I, are pure spiritual identities. Now just try to understand this. I am trying to explain our factual position, purport. The factual position of both the Supreme Personality of Godhead and the living entity is qualitatively one. The Supreme Lord is a Supreme Spirit, the Super Soul, and the Living Entity is an individual spiritual soul. Even though both of them are original spiritual identities, the Living Entity forgets his identity when he comes in contact with the material nature and becomes conditioned. At such a time, he identifies himself as a product of the material nature because of the material body. He forgets that he is eternal, Sanatan, part and parcel of Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is oh, sorry, one second. This is confirmed in this way. Mamai Vamsho Jiva Loke Jiva Bhuta Sanatana. The word Sanatana is found in several places in Bhagavad Gita. Both the Lord and the living entity are Sanatan, eternal, and there is also a place known as Sanatana, beyond the material nature. The real residence of both the living entity and the God is the domain of Sanatana, not this material world. The material world is temporary eternal energy of the Lord and the living entity is placed in this material world because he wanted to imitate the position of the Supreme Personality of God in the, this material world. He tries to enjoy his senses to his best capacity. All the activities of the conditioned soul within this material world are perpetually taking place in different types of bodies. But when the living entity acquires developed consciousness, he should try to re rectify his situation and again become a member of the spiritual world. The process by which one can return home back to Godhead is Bhakti Yoga, sometimes called Sanatana Dharma. Instead of accepting a temporary occupation, occupational duty based on the material body, one should take the process of Sanatana Dharma or bhakti yoga so that one can put an end to this perpetual bondage in material bodies and return back back to godhead as long as the human society works on the basis of false material identification and so so called advancements of science and philosophy are simply useless they only serve to mis to mislead human society in the material world the blind Simply lead the blind. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Do we need the next, next verse also? No, Prabhuji. Only yeah, one that's verse. All. One verse, right? Thank yeah. you, Mataji. And I don't see Maharaj uh, joining. So. Lavanya, Mataji, can you check, Mataji? Yes, Mataji. I'll try.
हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे राम राम हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे माताजी आई कॉल तुषार प्रभु ही इज गोइंग टू फाइंड आउट
Mataji Maharaj has joined, I think. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Please accept my blessings. Say, Sala Krishna, Shila Prabhupada, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for your kind association and your blessings. So, please take over, Maharaj. Okay, thank you. So, according to schedule, we will be reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 4, Chapter 28, entitled Paranjana Becomes a Woman in the Next Life. This is text number 61. Yeah, Hare Krishna Maharaj, we already read the verse. Oh, you read the verse? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so good. So I'll just, just speak now then. Yes, Maharaj. Okay. So, Omigyan Timirandasya Kirajana Sadakaya Jaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Vena Maha Shri Chaitanya Manobis Tam Stapti Tam Yena Bhutalai Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swam Padati Tam Ma Om Vishnu Vadaya Krishna Pastaya Bhutale, Sri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine, Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gauravani Pitarine, Nirisisa Sunyavadi Pasketya Deve Sitarine, Panchakalpa Tarubis Jankripa Sindhu, Evacha, Pitanam, Avane Vyo, Vaishnava Vyo, Namaha Namaha. Jai Sri Krishna, Jai Tanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadahar, Sri Vasadi Gaur, Bhakta Rinna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Did you uh, read the purport also? Yes, Maharaj, we read it. Okay. All right, so what is happening here in a series of verses, which will continue on, is that the uh, person who thinks themselves to be uh, the wife of Paranjana, this is an allegory. And the allegory is centered around this king, King Prachini Barhisha who is being speaking, spoken to by Narada Muni. Narada is um, wanting to instruct the king without directly giving him the understanding that he's instructing him. So he uses an allegory. And the allegory is the material world and the living entity's entanglement in the material world particularly his entanglement or in the material body, which is the foundation for the entanglement in the material world. The entanglement that the soul receives comes through the feature of accepting a body. As soon as, we, as, soon as the living entity accepts the body and so many other up, we call upadis or designations, responsibilities, duties, relationships develop based on the particular type of body we have and the desires that we have in order to fulfill our, you know, golden one or material one. So here, <clears throat> what is being said is this uh, person who is actually the super soul in the form of a Brahmin is speaking to the queen who is supposedly the wife of Puranjana. He calls her Puranjani. And uh, he's saying something. He's saying, uh, your identity of yourself is multi. 
and it have, has been happening through many, many sojourns as you come to this material world. Sometimes you are a chaste woman, sometimes you're a eunuch, sometimes a man. And the list will continue on and on. The Shastras say, Karanam Gunasango Sho Sadasajoni Janmasi. That the living entity travels throughout the material universities, universities and uh, universes, universes. Sometimes like accepting a body of a, a human being, sometimes accepting a lower form of life, sometimes a higher form of life and demigods like that. So this goes on life after life. And the living entity identifies with these particular uh, designations in the form of the body and the relationships they have with these living entities based on that body. And there's a whole list, you know. And all these things are trying to be cleared away by this uh, Brahmana who is actually, he's actually saying, I'm your best friend. Uh, you, you have forgotten me, but I haven't forgotten you. Now I've come to explain our relationship. Now, two principles are being made here are two major points. Which are the foundations for the practice of Krishna consciousness? And one is what you're not and what you are. What you're not is many, what you are is one. What we're not is what we go through in the different phases of our life and accepting designations, responsibilities, identities based on these uh, material activities. So this is the foundation, and the Krishna also explains this in the Bhagavad Gita in the very beginning, when he begins his uh, dialogue with Arjuna. He he says, you know, never was a time that I did not exist, nor you, referring to all the kings on the battlefront, and all these kings, and never in the future shall we all cease to be. So Krishna starts the dialogue with Arjuna by saying, we're all eternal. And you have forgotten due to your having a material body because every time we come into this world, we accept a material body and we forget our particular material situation in our previous lives. And this life becomes the most important. This forgetfulness is actually a feature <coughs> of Maya coming as a blessing through the, uh, from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So one can concentrate on getting out of the material body based on the particular situation they're in. If we didn't forget our past lives, we might look back and see other lives that were much more glorious than the present one and lament our particular situation or try to redefine our identity based on what we were in the past. Or we may even try to act in a previous relationship that we had in the material world in the present, which will only stifle and block, interfere with our ability to use the situation we have at hand to get out of this particular uh, entanglement that we are presently in. So devotional service is the means. And here Krishna in the form of the super soul is reminding the living entity of the relationship they have. So as Krishna also explains in the fourth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, that uh, I spoke the same science to the sun god Vivishwan 40 million years ago, but you, you were also here, but you have forgotten it and I have not. <laughs> Krishna is again reminding Arjuna that uh, this forgetfulness is a feat each time we accept the material body in this world.
But then again, the Bhagavad Gita, and then also here is that it, it's, it awakens our real identity. Now there's two features of our real identity. One is the innate fe feature and one is the particular feature. The innate feature is that we are by nature spiritual. Jibir, Surupai, Krishnera, Nityadas. We are a fraction of the energy of Krishna for the purpose of rendering loving service to Krishna as the, uh, as the means to attain perfection in existence. So that's explained throughout the Shastras that the living entity is a actually belongs to Krishna, doesn't belong to this material world. And uh, that getting out of that, what we say, wrong conception of life or material conception of life is by rendering loving service to the transcendental Lord. And that loving service, as it says, must be free from personal desire for gain and ultimately must be uh, continuous. And then, of course, we understand that bhakti means pure bhakti. Pure bhakti means uh, simply to serve Krishna and with the desire to please Krishna by accepting Krishna's instructions in the form of Shastra and spiritual masters and also uh, to reconfirm these Shastras and spiritual masters we have the lives of the previous Acharyas in the cyclic succession to uh, give us the example of what the Shastra is saying and what the spirit, present spiritual master is also teaching us. So this is bhakti. And uh, the second part, which is our particular identity, which is one stage more, is that we have a particular relationship with Krishna in the spiritual world based on uh, that, uh, that eternal loving mood. In other words, we are, as we have a material identity, we also have a spiritual identity. To say that we are spirit soul is correct. But then again, what is the nature of that spiritual soul's identity? It has form. It has activities based on that transcendental form that it possesses. So that's the second stage or a higher stage. Who are we in the spiritual world and what is our relationship with Krishna? So both of these two aspects of our identity is uh, understood and ex eventually revealed through the process of devotion and service. And Prabhupada wants to make the point, and he does it continuously throughout the purport, that our identity is spiritual and our relationship with this material world is ultimately um, a feature of our deviation from Krishna. In other words, we fall to this material world because for some reason or other, I mean, we don't really know until we get back. Somehow we came to this material world. But here we are because uh, we wanted to be separate from Krishna. We wanted to enjoy separate from Krishna. We wanted to be the main person who receives all the attention. So we play that role in this world. So we have, we get a family and the family makes you seem so important. So you can have some attention, some affection. So in this world, we are acting like Krishna by somehow or other putting ourselves in a position of accepting service from others. But in the spiritual world, we serve Krishna for Krishna's pleasure. And we find unlimited and everlasting and uh, happiness in that relationship. So here, this verse and purport is actually just emphasizing over and over what is the nature of this material world. 
it's easy to forget because the material energy consists of what is called maya. Maya is the illusionary potency of the Lord, and it has two features to it. It makes you forget. Uh, it kicks you away from Krishna, throws you outside of Krishna's service, and makes you forget that relationship. It's called throwing potency and covering potency. So Maya, that's Maya's potency. And how does she do that? By alluring us to try to enjoy in this material world through the mind, through the senses, through the intelligence, like that. So this goes on as material life. Uh, but material life is simply, as it's explained, that people are trying to enjoy. They make plans to enjoy. And we find that either it doesn't come up to their expectations or it becomes something completely opposite in the form of suffering. Or if it does come up to their expectations, it ends within a certain period of time. So this is the nature of this material world. So therefore we can't enjoy in this world and we can't renounce in this world. Renunciation or dry renunciation, giving up material activities are what the a certain class of spiritualists known as the jnanis do, but they don't take up any positive spiritual activities such as devotion to Krishna. And therefore, they again, as the scriptures say, they again fall back into the material energy to take up material activities again. The verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam in the 10th Kid, Aruna Krishchena Padam Padam Padantiyada Na Usmaram Ahangrayaha, that uh, although they uh, give up all material activities and realize themselves different from everything material, because they don't render devotional service to the Lord, then again, they fall down into material activities because activity is the nature of the soul. The soul is by nature sentient, and therefore it must have relationships, it must have activities. So unless those relationships are spiritual, then one will take up material activities to fulfill that need for relationships. Well, this is the material world. <laughs> so, uh, and Prabhupada says, you know, we develop a particular type of consciousness, just like there are 8,400,000 species of life. That means there are 8,400,000 different types of consciousness based on a particular type of body that that living entity has. Within the category of the different types of bodies, there are also different consciousness. We see that also too. Although there may be some similarity, just like you see dogs. You see there are so many kinds of dogs and even within the same type of dog, two dogs may be acting and reacting differently because each soul, no matter what body it is, has a unique, unique way of express, expressing itself, which is unique to its own identity or its own, its, its own, uh, uh, what is it? Its own spiritual qualities, you might say, like that, according to it, the type of body that it accepts. Like that. So we're, so material life is simply a struggle Spiritual life is the beginning, and the taking up bhakti yoga is the beginning of ending the struggle to find satisfaction and happiness. And so Krishna, I mean, the whole Shastras constantly are emphasizing the importance of seeing ourself different than everything in this material world and acting in the spiritual world. That's the basis of the whole. That's why Krishna in the very beginning of Bhagavad Gita spends 20 verses in the second chapter just enlightening Arjuna in the difference between matter and spirit, the difference between the body and the soul, 
the difference between what is eternal and what is temporary. Mm -hmm. But unless the living entity continuously, continuously hears about the futility of material endeavors, material life, along with seriously practicing bhakti yoga to overcome the attachment or even the, uh, what we say, uh, what's the word? The conscious, the material consciousness that we have developed becomes very, very difficult. So that's why bhakti yoga is based on repetition. We don't emphasize so many activities, but we emphasize developing each of the activities, such as reading and studying, serving in different ways, chanting the holy names of the Lord, worshiping, praying. All these things are not just done once or in a mechanical way, they're done with great attachment and with great attention. So in that way, we start to uh, distance ourselves from our material identity and start to see everything in relationship to Krishna. On a higher level, in our existence in the material world, we learn to see everything in relationship to Krishna. That all matter, no matter what form it may take, because there's a, there's actually there's actually three three levels of creation. There's three levels of creation. There is Krishna who creates the material ingredients, as he says in the Bhagavad Gita, "Bhumir um, apalalo bayu, kambano buriye vicha, ahankar itiyame bina prakriti astada." Earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, and false seagulls, all of these eight elements together constitute my separated material energy. And then those energies taken by Lord Brahma, Brahma is enlightened by Krishna about the relationship between himself and his service to Krishna, which is to take these eight elements and formulate the material bodies of the living entities. And therefore, Brahma creates 10 suns, and these 10 suns also expand into other living entities who will become progenitors. And these progenitors are actually creating many, many forms of life. And uh, that's all explained nicely in detail in the third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. So Brahma is the secondary creator, but the third creator is us. We take the material elements and we reformulate them into buildings and into you know, technological devices. Um, in other words, all the facilities you see in this material world that makes up the, uh, the gross matter, steel, glass, you know, and all the different gadgets that come from these basic elements like that. So when we know, we see that there's three levels of these. We are, in one sense, a creator in the sense that we reformulate the material energy into these different amenities we use in our day-to-day -day life. So one who can see through knowledge, can see that on any level, all these energies, forms, are also coming ultimately from the original source, Krishna. So as Prabhupada clearly explains, the creator is also the proprietor. So whatever Krishna creates, and we reformulate it into our own ideas of, of creation, simply belongs to Krishna. The example is that if you go, if you're going out to do some work for someone, they may give you the tools to do the work, all the facilities and everything. You do the work and the results of the work goes to them, but 
you may you get some remuneration for the activities you perform. So for example, a carpenter, a carpenter will be supplied the necessary tools and materials to build the house for someone. He'll get his pay, but the house belongs to the person who employs him. It's the same way everything belongs to Krishna. And we have our right to take whatever we need in this world to keep body and soul together. So what makes our life in the material world, or what makes our life in Krishna consciousness simple and easy in our execution of devotional service while we're in the material world is the principle of simplicity, learning how to live with what we actually need and not more than that. And that's explained in the, uh, in the uh, Isha Upanishads. Isha, what is that verse? It's the first verse in Sri Isha Upanishad. Isha Vasham Idam Sarvam Yat Kinchatam Jagat Tena Jatena Bunchitaha Magutaha Kasiswit Danam. Yeah, everything animate and intimate that is within the universe is controlled and owned by the Lord. Therefore, one should accept only those things necessary for himself, which are set aside as his quota, knowing, let me see here, knowing, uh, knowing well to whom they belong to. And one should not accept other things. Mm -hmm. So here is the formula for living happily. Now go to verse number two. Verse number two, the next verse in this series. Now, one may aspire to live for hundreds of years if he continually goes on working in that way. For that sort of work, for that sort of work will now bind him to the law of karma. There is no alternative to this way for man. So this refers to the previous verse. One may aspire to live for hundreds of years if he continues going on, goes on working in that way, according to verse number one. So the principle is to live according to your needs and live simply and use your time. Time is short for executing the goal of life, which is Krishna consciousness. Okay. So we have the process and we also have the knowledge by which to execute the process. We also have the knowledge by which we, things that we don't need to do. In other words, what we're supposed to do and what we're not supposed to do is clearly explained in the Shastras. These things are called vidis. Vidis means things to do and vishedas means things to avoid. Um, this is the principle of success in Krishna consciousness. Knowing these two categories in relationship to our day-to-day -day life in this world, in this world, in our execution of devotional service. One who knows what to do but doesn't know what not to do will find it become difficult in the execution of devotional service, and progress will be very, very slow, if any. It's just like the elephant bath. The elephant bath is you, the elephant goes down to the river and he takes a nice bath, gets all cleaned up, comes out, and then when he gets back onto the shore, he takes his trunk and throws dust all over his body. That's called Hasti Snan, elephant bath. What is the use of that kind of bathing? So it's, it's incumbent and essential to understand what to avoid in our execution of devotional service because these things can, will trap us and make the whole process of devotional service arduous or very uh, long-term. It will be a hard struggle. 
So once that's why this, these two features of transcendental knowledge are the foundation, and this is explained by Sanatana Goswami in Hari Bhakti Vilas as Anakulena Krishna and Patiku, Anakulena Asya and Patiku. Uh, these two principles, Anuko means favorable, Pratiku means unfavorable. One has to have a knowledge of that. And therefore, the Shastras teach three aspects of, uh, <clears throat> of the process of bhakti. And it's called Sambandham, Abhideya, and Prayojana. Sambandham means relationship. Sambandha comprises the largest category within Vedic knowledge. What is our relationship with every other aspect that we develop relationships with? In other words, with our friends, family members, husband, guru, wife, uh, brother, sister, the, the earth, things in general. What is, our, what is the sambandha? <clears throat> what is the proper relationship? Bhakti Vinod Thakur has written a nice two-volume book called Vinod by Bhavi, by Baba, where he covers these categories of sambandha. Abhideya is the other process or the other feature of the Vedic knowledge, and that is the process of bhakti. And the third is prayojana, that means by proper execution of uh, <clears throat> bhakti, applying the proper sambandha for, to the abhideya, we get the result, which is the prayojana. Sounds a little complicated, but it's not. <clears throat> it's quite easy when you know relationships and you know how to act within that relationship. And that's the problem with this world. People don't know who they are. Therefore, they don't know how to develop proper relationships with others. <laughs> when we know who we are, then we can understand the knowledge that is required in order to develop proper relationships. And ultimately, the proper, the most important relationship is our relationship with Krishna. But in order to facilitate that and to reach that point of that relationship, we have to somehow or other work in such a way as that we perfect our relationships with others on this level based on spiritual principles. The ultimate principle, which makes relationships easy, it's kind of a generic principle, but it's a foundational principle, and that is that we are servant. So when we understand that we are servant and we can never be anything else but a servant, and if you look at it in a complete perspective, both materially and spiritually, you'll see that everyone is serving in some capacity, either materially or spiritually. So everyone has that feature of existence that we are servant. So when we perfect our service attitude in relationship to Krishna and learn how that applies in all aspects of our life with other living entities and with things in general, then we have this complete knowledge for the execution of devotional service. Okay, therefore, reading and studying scripture is... is uh, fundamental to developing this knowledge and hearing from Krishna's representative. Okay, so this is something, again, back to the main point, the uh, super soul coming in the form of a Brahman is reminding the living entity that you're not any of these things you think you are, you belong to me. Okay, any questions or comments?
Yeah, your volume. You need to turn up your volume. Yeah, you need to turn up your volume. Um, I'm not Turn up your volume a little. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my obeisances. All goes to Shila Prabhupada. So, thank you so much, Maharaj, for the very enlightening class. So, I request uh, devotees if they have any questions, they can ask Maharaj. Hare Krishna, dear Maharaj. Dhanvat Pranam, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. This is Mamta here, Maharaj. Very well. Very yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Maharaj, I had a question. Uh, so, Ma Maharaj, I heard that, uh, you know, when two devotees are fighting or they're having some argument or something, so it's on a very transcendental level and we shouldn't be uh, interfering in that in it or anybody else shouldn't make any conclusions out of it so in that case uh, i was thinking we also find uh, ourselves in such situations sometimes or we see other devotees sometimes so how do we understand you know that are we supposed to intervene or you know help them or just leave it or it is transcendental so that was my confusion maharaj well it depends on the circumstance. And circumstances are as variegated as there are reasons for, dis for disagreement. So it requires intelligence. Mm -hmm. And also understanding your relationship with those persons that you are, that are having this discussion. And that relationship is fundamental to understanding how you should act. So I can only give you general principles because each situation, there may be times where one has to intervene and there are other times where one should not intervene. And there may also be other options so it requires intelligence to see what is my relationship, what is the nature, uh, what is the what is the nature of the discussion, and then you have to act based on that. So it requires a little bit of a some experience in dealing with. Uh, situations like this because we're not always uh, expert uh, or know how to deal with it or whether we should deal with it at all. So if you could give me a practical example, I can give you maybe something more specific. Uh, I don't have any example. Like I read in uh... Uh, Chaitanya Bhagavat that uh, so I, I was just uh, thinking about it you know for a few few days and I thought because well, it happens with us so well I think what Chaitanya Bhagavat is saying is a little different than what's happening on our, our level Chaitanya Bhagavat is actually saying that when two transcendental persons get into some disagreement to take the side of either one one becomes destroyed that's and yes, there's, yes. The, there's the the example was in when uh, Lord Lord Nityananda and Sri Advaita when they were at the house of Advaita 
Lord Chaitanya was also there. And um, Nityananda was ask, acting in his Avaduta-like manner. And Advaita was responding in somewhat of a joking way, but also he wanted, he was also saying certain things to Nityananda. So they went back and forth, accusing each other. So in that particular uh, encounter, the purport describes that one who takes the side of either one of them will become vanquished because they don't understand the nature of that relationship. So that's what the scriptures are saying. When you're yes. talking about something on our level, that's, that's a little bit different. Of course, mm -hmm. if you see two senior devotees in your day-to-day -day life uh, arguing over some kind of spiritual principles, then uh, that's, that will apply in the same way. But if it's just some mundane discussion based on devotees are just fighting over something material, mm -hmm. that's different. Okay. Yes, Maharaj, this is what uh, you know. I wanted to know. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for the answer mm -hmm. and your wonderful association. Hare I think, I, Hare Krishna Maharaj, there is some related question to my question in the chat. Hare Krishna. Okay. Thank you. Let's see what's on the chat. One devotee is humiliated by another in public. What should we do in such a situation? <laughs> well, Again, that depends on your relationship with them. <coughs> That's the main point, what is that relationship? You could intervene and make it worse. <laughs> Of course, no one should humiliate another person in public. If there's some reason to say something in a humiliating way, it should never be done in public. Just like even, well, I mean, Prabhupada, sometimes he did that. He chastised one of his disciples in amidst the song of many disciples there. He wasn't humiliating them, he was correcting them. Um, so sometimes when a guru does that, a person will feel like they're being humiliated, but coming from the spiritual master is different. When we see two people who are on equal level, now if, if a wife humiliates the husband in public, uh, then she's completely out, out of touch with proper behavior. Or the husband does the same thing in public to the wife. He's acting wrongly also. So sometimes people lose control and become overwhelmed with lust and anger and therefore they speak wrongly or they speak in the wrong setting. Okay. You have to see what's your relationship with these individuals and the situation ahead of time and think whether to act or not act or Sometimes you might just try to, you know, divert the attention away from the 
the topic that they are talking about, and that kind of like diffuses the whole thing. But we can't come up with a what we say a form of you know a particular mechanical formula it requires intelligence and understanding both of relationships and the situation at hand. Okay. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dhanavad Prana. Maharaj, I, I had a query. In Krishna consciousness, we know that Krishna is the enjoyer and we are being enjoyed and we, we have to do everything for the pleasure of Krishna. Uh, our devotional service, everything which we are doing in Krishna consciousness. But from a practical point of view, from devotees point of view, uh, sometimes one is little confused, like how to, do we interpret that? What is, the, what is the nature of the confusion? That Krishna is the enjoyer and we have to do everything for the pleasure of Krishna. Um, so practically, well, uh, if we you, forget if you, that. Yeah, if you, if you think you have to do it, then then you're in the wrong consciousness. <laughs> but if you know that this is what will make you happy, then you want to do it. <laughs> right. So when we live our life centered around the goal of developing our love for Krishna, then we perform all activities in the best possible way. Although we may not always be conscious that we're doing it for Krishna's pleasure, but we're connected to Krishna through the process of devotional service. So the activities we perform are always performed according to the direction of Guru, Shado, and Shastra. And if we do that, then it's done in the proper way, with the proper mood. And then it's for the pleasure of Krishna. As long as long as we direct it towards the Lord. In other words, in other words, what what makes difficult us difficulty is we're looking for something for ourselves in every activity we perform. Serve for the sake of serving rather than serve for the sake of trying to get something. And if you serve for the sake of serving, you get so much out of it. The service itself is satisfying. The service itself brings satisfaction, happiness, pleasure, knowledge. But if you're thinking, I'm going to do this because the results, I'll get some good results and I'll enjoy those results or I won't do this because it doesn't make me happy, although I, I'm supposed to. Mm -hmm. So when you put your own happiness forward as the motivation for activity, then you're acting outside of that principle of doing everything for the service of the world. But even if you're not always conscious of the fact that you're doing it as a pleasure activity for the Lord, if you're following the principles as given to us by the spiritual master, then that's, that's, uh, that's perfect. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Was that clear? Yes, Maharaj. Okay, good. Thank you. We have any more questions? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada.
thank you so much, Maharaj, for your association uh, this morning. Uh, Maharaj, I have a question um, uh, from uh, Bhagavad Gita, second chapter, uh, third chapter. Uh, third chapter, verse 12, you know, Krishna says that uh, demigods are satisfied by the performance of sacrifice or the yajnas. So one must perform the sacrifice for demigods in order to, in order for them to supply the necessities of the life. And this is not applicable to devotees. Yeah, Krishna, um, Prabhupada says in the purport that, you know, those who know the Supreme Personality of Godhead, um, that's not recommended, but for the other people. Uh, but at the same time, Krishna in Govardhan Leela, he persuades you know, all the residents of Vrindavan not to perform any uh, sacrifice for Indra. So there the intention is to, um, 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 to teach a lesson to um, Lord Indra. But at the same time, uh, how do we understand this uh, apparent uh, contradiction there? You know, um, is it a must to perform sacrifice to demigods? Uh, because demigods are obligated, or that is their duty to give the basic necessities, whether one performs yajna or not. Um, but uh, the verse doesn't indicate uh, like that. So could you please elaborate? Well, Krishna addresses that in the seventh canto, seventh chapter of Bhagavad Gita, where he explains four verses that whatever the demigods can supply are ultimately coming from me. He, and he also says those who worship the demigods are less intelligent. Because of Rita, Rita Gyan, Rita means damaged knowledge or less intelligent. So, and in this age, really, is Krishna Varna Prasad Krishna Sangopanga Saparsadam Yagyai Sankirtanai Prayai Yajanti Hi Sumeda Saha. So this is the, the recommended sacrifice in this age, is to perform Sankirtan Yagya, congregational chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Okay? That is the prime principle of sacrifice in this age. And you'll find in many Prabhupada's purports, when he talks about sacrifices, he ultimately comes back to that as the way to perform sacrifice in this age. Now, we might perform some kind of duties on the material level in order to satisfy uh, friends, relatives, family members like that. But ultimately, all these different activities must, uh, must be accompanied by chanting of the Holy Names of God. Like that. Mm -hmm. For instance, when Prabhupada opened the Krishna Balaram temple in Vrindavan, he describes it in the sixth canto, how that he would have been happy simply to uh, just have Harinam Sankirtan as a way to welcome the deities into the temple and, and perform the, the ceremony. But because he was in Vrindavan and there were so many Mahants, priests, sadhus coming from the different mosques, they would have, if they would have saw that, they would have thought our movement was, what we say, unbonafide. So Prabhupada did the elaborate yagya, the Agni Hotri yagya, with various mantras and everything, in order to install the deities. But later on, he, he makes that point that it wasn't necessary, but because we wanted to establish our credibility as a bona fide organization in Vrindavan, we had to go through with that. So sometimes there is some concession performing these various types of yagyas and pujas. But when we do that, if it's necessary, it's just it, everything should be accompanied by the chanting of the Holy Names. But there's no, there's no reason to worship devas. Because it's interesting, you'll find something very chronological in the, the, the date that uh, Govardhan Puja appears in the, in the calendar. Prior to that, there's about two weeks of Jagya for Devas. And those of you who are born in the Hindu culture, you know there's so many sacrifices to Lakshmi, to uh, Ganesh, 
and it's done two weeks prior to Govardhan Puja. And then you have the Diwali, it's all there. Now, Krishna wanted to make a point. So that lifting of Govardhan Hill is ultimately the point that to simply worship me, that's the ultimate sacrifice. All these other sacrifices are not required. Because he is he is Yagya Bhuk. He is the goal of all sacrifices. And we also have the verse from the 11th canto. Devarsi putatma nirnam pratingnam na kinkana rayan vajji chinayam sarvatmadyam saranam pramamyam kato mukundam riti paritik kartum um, that when you come into this world, you have debts to the devas, you have debts to your family members, you have debts to so many aspects of different categories of living entities. But one who surrenders to Mukunda, engages in devotional service, all these debts are automatically taken care of. Mm. So that's hard for people who are born in the Vedic culture in India, because they're used to all these pujas and Omas and yagyas like that. But when you understand that you can also have wonderful sacrifices, Harinam sacrifice like that. We also do pujas when it comes to, or sacrifices when we come to diksha, when we give initiations like that. There is marriage ceremonies. We do yagyas also for those like that. But as far as worshiping the devas, um, they are automatically satisfied by by Sankirtan Yoga. I could give you some interesting examples of how we perform Sankirtan Yoga during certain times of the year when there was a drought in a particular place. And as soon as we did that, we broke the drought. That happened in America a few times. I was directly involved in one situation in Cincinnati, Ohio, back in the year 1993, when it was a, a huge drought. Uh, it's a long story, the details, but ultimately we were on a radio show and the radio announced, asked us if we could break the drought. We said yes, simply by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. The drought had gone on for four months. This was in the middle of the, what they call it, the Corn Belt, the... Uh, Farm Belt, this was Ohio, Illinois, uh, where was it? Kentucky, Tennessee, all that. Didn't rain for three months or four months, something like that. People were being punished if they use water for washing their car or for sprinkling their lawn. The water was such a shortage. So when we came on, the uh, we were on a talk show, the host asked us if we could stop, we could make it rain. And we said, yeah. So he said, how? We will we'll chant Hare Krishna on, on the show here and we'll get everybody in, in the land of radio to chant with us. So we got to go, we got a little kirtan going at the radio station and the radio announcer was, in, was uh, encouraging all the listeners to chant with us. I mean, the listening audience covered 48, uh, I'm sorry, 38 states. So we had, we had, you know, thousands of people listening. And uh, so the show ended at around noontime. And at 2.30 that day, there was a, a downpour of rain that lasted three months. I mean, three days, three days. It rained for three consecutive days. The person who was the disc jockey on the radio show went to the went to the city hall in Cincinnati, Ohio, and got us an award from the city. We were given the key to the city. It was back in 1993. That's one example. Of course, we don't use the holy name in order to correct some material things, but we you did that to, so we could get people to chant. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much. <laughs> do we have question for? Uh, do we have time for another question, Maharaj? Or? Yeah. Did you uh, fully get my under uh, my understanding of the first answer? Yes, Maharaj. Yeah, yeah. I did. 
Yes, thank you. Thank yeah, you so much. Because it's, it, it's a problem. It's a problem. People can't give up they will, the demigod worship. They think it's necessary. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, Mara, uh, another question is from, uh, this is from Nectar of Devotion. Um, while reading Nectar of Devotion, I think this is this comes in chapter seven or eight, I don't remember. Um, there is one particular paragraph where Rupa Goswami says that uh, before worshiping the deity, one must worship Lord Ganesha. So, and th th it, there are about three or four sentences about, uh, about that particular aspect of it, uh, worshiping Ganesha. It says devotees should worship Lord Ganesha. Um, so, but the culture of worshiping Lord Ganesha is not established in ISKCON. So, um, any any specific uh, you know, preferences from Srila Prabhupada? Why it was I, get, I can give you a quote by one very senior devotee saying, "We don't worship Ganesh because who does Ganesh worship?" Yeah, Lord Narasimha. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. <laughs> His worship Lord Narasimha. <laughs> <laughs> for removal of all obstacles. <laughs> mm. So if you worship uh, Lord Nishringadev, Ganesh is also satisfied because that's his worshipable, you know, that's his Dev, that's his worshipable deity. Yeah, right, right. That aspect is there, Maharaj, but, uh, you know, um, I was kind of still, Rupa Goswami himself is saying that Ganesh must be worshipped. So that's the reason I was kind of thinking, is it because, you know, uh, Prabhupada did not want to confuse um, people by establishing Ganesh, Lord Ganesh worship in the temples? Is that I think it'd be for people who don't worship at all. Okay. okay. You know, for people who don't worship at all, you know, demigod worship is the beginning of understanding the importance of worship. Mm. And Ganesh is simply empowered to remove obstacles. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> you see, in our, in our temples, although we don't worship Ganesh, we have deities of Ganesh sometimes above the door of our temples. Mm. I have a little Ganesh deity here in my room. Mm. I keep him here, but I don't worship him. I worship Nisringadev. Because <laughs> 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 Nisringadev is the, is the one that's empowered by, by our acharyas. To, in other words, not, we are told that if we want to overcome obstacles in any aspect of our devotional service, the Shringadev is the person to approach. And there's different ways to worship the Shringadev according to the type of worship you're involved with. In. Mm -hmm. The Shringadev removes all obstacles. Okay. Yeah. Rupa Goswami, we have to, I have to actually see the passage. It seems like he's speaking to a certain class of people who don't worship. Somebody posted. Yeah, it says, okay. Yeah. One of the ones should not worship the deity first without worship of Gan Ganapati who drives the, in the in execution. In the Brahmin state of Ganati, Ganapati worships the lotus feet of Lord Shringadev and that way has become auspicious for the devotee in clearing out all impediments. Therefore, all devotees should worship Ganapati. Yeah, okay. Uh, I presented that same thing to one very senior devotee in our movement. And he said, mm. we just worship the Shringadev. <laughs> <laughs> Did I tell you who that senior devotee is? Yes, Maharaj, please. It was Bhakti Chiru Swami. Oh, okay. <laughs> Tell me that directly. Oh, okay. Okay. And he's also said it in, in public in the class. And so. mm. Yeah. Thank you, Maras. Thank you very much. Well, we have all respects to Ganapati. And many devotees around the world have deities of Ganapati in their house. Mm -hmm. And that's auspicious. And it's also, it's not against any form of worship. Yeah. But we don't put them on the same altar with the regular deities. We keep him in a, a separate place, but yeah, you know, having a, a, a deity of Ganapati is auspicious, very auspicious. Thank you, Maras. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. 
Are you in Charlotte? No, Maharaj. I'm in. Uh, I'm from Columbus, Ohio. Columbus. Oh, yes, okay. Maharaj. Oh, okay. Wonderful. Is the temple finished yet? Um, no, Maharaj. We are still uh, in the fundraising phase right now. Um, so we are hoping to start construction next year. That's what we are hoping. Because of yeah, because of COVID and uh, you know other situations, now things have become a little slow. Uh, but we are hoping to start construction next year. Okay. Every, everything's there in place then. Yeah. I look forward to visiting Columbus again. Yes, Maharaj. You know, so we are also you know, longing to you know, have your association. Um, but because of the COVID situations are totally different now. So hopefully next year, sometime next year, we you know, would like to invite you to Columbus. <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj, this is also Naveen Krishna Das watching you, Chandra Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Bro, Hare Bro. Hare Bro, so happy to see Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Bro, Mataji. How are you, Maharaj? Looking forward to next time I can get some of your wonderful cooking. <laughs> sure, Maharaj. It's been so long time. I'm still, I'm still remembering those memories that you have at your home. So, thank you so much, and we'll be waiting for you, Mara. Good. good. How's the family? Ah, good, Mara. Nahri is in the second year of school, college now. Oh. <laughs> I remember when he, I remember when he was five years old. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mara. He's into second year pre-med. <laughs> I'm feeling separation from all of you. <laughs> yes, Maharaj. I've been listening to your classes for the last few times on Bhakti Sangha. I'm like, when will, when will we see him in person? It's been so long. <laughs> Just pray that Mr. COVID becomes more compassionate. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Nice to see you. Really. Hare Krishna, my uh, Please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, thank you so much for your uh, continued association. Uh, Maharaj, I had a question about um, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. Uh, he's uh, telling that, I mean, in the introduction, Srila Prabhupada says that he's a direct disciple of uh, uh, Ru Rupa Goswami and Raghunath Das Goswami. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, He's a disciple of Nityananda Prabhu. Uh, can you explain on that, uh, Maharaj? Thank you. Yeah, you're gonna have many gurus. He, at the end of every chapter, he glorifies, you know, Rupa and Raghunath, falling at their lotus feet and praying that I, Krishna Das Kari Raj Goswami, write Chaitanya Charitamrita. They praise for their mercy, like that. Yeah, he's a disciple of Lord Nityananda. But there are many gurus. You can also have so many Shiksha gurus also. So Shiksha and Diksha are also the same. You have one Diksha and you can have many Shikshas. <laughs> so yeah. Thank you, Maharaj. And, and Rupa and, and, and Raghunath Das are, you know, great literary proponents in our Sampradaya. So he's praying to them for the mercy he needs in order to write Chaitanya Chari Kamita. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you for Thank everything. You. Yesterday you were in the car and today you're outside again. No, 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 just in the patio, Maharaj. It seems like it's very warm there, huh? Yeah, it's warm. It's warm uh, here. Good, good. 
you are hoping to have your association maharaj i'm making my list of places to go <laughs> thank you thank you maharaj okay i guess we can stop here yes thank maharaj you. thank you very much uh, shamagori and thank you to your good husband abhi ram saka i'm sure he's busy doing something important <laughs> uh, he he already started office the uh, office has came home like uh, you know working from home so his meeting has already started so good I offer my respects to him from him to maharaj let's pay obeisances to maharaj panchakalpatal obeisance kripa sindhu bhai bacha anta koti vaishna vrindhi jai भगवतम की जय 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 हरि बोल